Hey, what up world? This your man, Bouchon Glover. And uh, I had to chop it up today. Today is Monday, July 18th, 2022, 18. One is knowledge, eight is build or destroy. Now, we're dealing in some, some dark times right now. And uh, we have to make a decision to build, you know, from where we are right now and as a people. Because uh, the number eight is built to destroy and it takes, what, nine months to have a baby. So, you know, it's no secret why, you know, we're talking about abortion rights and things like that. Because there are some things down the road that we're going to have to deal with. Now, just to keep it 100 with you, um, black America, the black community does have a plan. We're not going to just sit back and wait, you know, for you guys to polarize us, you know, with all these crazy you know, mental aspects that's going to have us uh, acting out and killing another generation, you know, prior to the 2024 presidential elections, because Kamala Harris made it clear Joe Biden's running again and she's going to run again. And you wonder why um, she's the vice president, because by her being a vice president of America, then there's no way they're going to do anything to Joe. So I'm here today just to really chop it up with my people, man, and uh, appreciate you share the video. But um we got played. And um, the saying is first time shame on me, the second time shame on you. But this one is first time shame on me, second time shame on me. Just like we have to say first time shame on us, second time shame on us. Because what's going on right now in the world is exactly what we asked for. And it's exactly what we voted for. OK, evil was on the ballot in 2022. Evil was on the ballot in 2022. So what motivated this video this morning, because I'm looking at world news and I'm seeing um, Ukraine being just destroyed. And when I say Ukraine being destroyed, meaning we're sending money to a country that's pretty much failing. There's nothing we're going to do other than give them hush money. But the, the country continues to be destroyed. And I saw a father burying his uh, Ukrainian father, burying his four year old daughter. And the caption says evil will not prevail. And I sat there and I thought about it. How can evil not prevail when evil was on the ballot in 2022? So we have to be proactive instead of reactive. So we're not going to get played again. So evil was on the ballot. So evil is in the White House. OK. Now, if you understand what evil is, I don't think the second time around we will make that same mistake. So we're not going to sit back and wait for them to give us our options. We're going to be proactive instead of reactive and make sure that we have skin in the game, that we have a plan. Now, prior to the 2020 election, Ice Cube came out and he had the black contract. And now with that black contract, the NFL has partnered up with Ice Cube's group. And they are talking about racial equity now. So the NFL is understanding. And if you look at music, music is starting to respond as well, because we know that we used our entertainers and everybody was out there promoting these presidential candidates. And one, two of them was Jay-Z and Beyonce. And I saw a concert when they wanted Hillary to win over Trump. And I saw that and I said, wait a minute, this thing is getting out of hand. But this is uh, something that a time that we was going through that we got to talk about now, because at that time, Beyonce was Sasha Fierce. Now she Beyonce, she beat, she bay, she's Jay-Z's woman again. And she's actually with her hit single, You Can't Have My Soul. That's a direct message to the Democratic Party. And I'm saying this because the presidential election in 2022 was for the soul of America. You can look it up. President Joe Biden said it himself. This race is for the soul of America. OK, and the soul of America pretty much was the, you know, uh, African-American people who pretty much sold out. Now, I love the fact that my narrative has not changed. I love the fact that I'm not being a hypocrite. I love the fact that I'm keeping it 100 with God's people because there's going to be a whole lot of people being called out. There's going to be a whole lot of people that are going to be canceled. There's going to be a whole lot of people that will not be relevant prior to the 2024 election. So we're not just going to sit back and wait on some catastrophic event or some polarizing event to get us all polarized into hating humans. Because at the end of the day, you know, we are God's people 
And if we do this again, it will be on us. The first time, shame on us. Second time, shame on us because we don't do evil. Now, I'd be having these conversations and I did a few think tanks and it's unanimous. We've been talking about Rosa Parks. So in that 2024 election, we might, you know, take the advice of uh, Donald Trump when he was asked about the Proud Boys and told him to stand by and stand back. So standing by and standing back is the most relevant thing that we can do right now as a people. Now, for those who say this is what they want us to do. Well, misery loves company. So since we voted for the Biden administration, are we responsible for what's going on in the world? I'll wait. So now that we see how important and how imperative it is to make a change, because the Democratic Party that we see today is not Mama Nim's party. And when I say Mama's Nim, I mean our mama and our grandmother and our great grandparents, because that party was different than the party today. The Democratic Party of today is the LBGTQ car, is the Women's Live movement, is the, the immigrants, is everything under the sun that is genocidal to the black community. So this is why we're getting back to who we are as a people. And anybody that don't like it, blank you, your mama, and anything that you believe in, because evil will not continue to prevail in the black community because there is black men that are, have been raised and grown up since birth to deal with these powers and principalities that I'm speaking on right now. Now, we don't have no leader. Everybody's stepping up because we know without a shadow of a doubt, the federal government, along with the CIA, will kill any Maasai type figure in the black community. And this is why they canceled Trump. They couldn't kill him, but he was a Maasai type fig uh, figure to Americans and they got rid of him. They got rid of him so much he had to create his own social media platform because of the mainstream media platforms that was used to win the 2020 election for Joe Biden. Now they're trying to sell. You see um, Twitter's trying to sell to Elon Musk and Elon Musk found out they have millions of bots up in there. Excuse me. They have millions of bots up in there. Right. And those bots can actually block his blessings. So he's not going to do anything with that. So they're trying to sue Elon Musk and say, you got to buy Twitter. But why would you buy something that has a, you know, a, a flag on his registration? You know, it have a salvage title. You know, don't buy it. Create something new. So I'm not here to, to entertain you. I'm here to teach you. I'm here to get you to understand that moving forward, we got to be proactive instead of reactive, man. And I'm keeping it 100. And I apologize to the men, brothers. I am so sorry, you know, for assuming and acting as if, you know, we had a plan and everybody was going to fall in line. I've been trying to, you know, connect with every other entity other than my brothers. I even tried to... Uh, connect with my sisters. And that was an epic fail because after two little episodes, I had about a hundred inboxes of the sisters telling me what I should do or should say, but I'm not a sellout. I'm a man. Now, as a man that's born again, when I say born again, man, I died probably at 27 years old when I found Christ. I've been waiting a long time, kind of in the cuffs, but right now I'm really, you know, it, it hit me like, dude, you got to do something because if you don't do something, then you are responsible for at least your portion. So this is why I'm calling all men, because we need all men on deck on this one. Because Adam, in the Bible, when it comes to the book of Genesis, the first man made it a boneheaded mistake and messed up and hearkened to his woman instead of listening to God. So now that we got a second time around or another opportunity to get it right, so we're not going to blame anybody or point any fingers. So instead of hearkening to, you know, anything outside of God, that's what we have to do. So just like Adam listened to Eve and didn't listen to God, we're not going to listen to our woman. We're going to listen to God and lead our woman because we know our women don't want to have the stresses of the world today. We know that the world was kind of warped and created an environment for our women to actually take on manly duties. And by us doing so, the roles have been uh, flipped. You got aggressive alpha females and you got beta and seta males in which we on the street call busters and custers because they are B-A-N's, bands. B-A-N. The B word, the A-N's, you get it. And those individuals are the ones that, you know, we're going to call out, you know, that we're going to deal with on site. 
because we have to be on one sheet of music and we have to do what we're supposed to do. Because if you look at the race as a people, we have not had a conversation about racial equity. When you look at the civil rights movement, it ended in 1964 along with the civil rights acts. So they played us. Lyndon B. Johnson gave power to the woman, which is the women lives movement. And he gave power to the LBGTQ community, which is uh, white men, which is gay white men. And it's kind of weird that monkeypox in America the only cases in New York, over 300 cases, has been associated with only men. So we have another gay agenda type disease that's affecting men. So just look it up. Think about it. Um, monkey pox. There's not been a case of uh, a woman having monkey pox in this country. It's like a gay man thing. So just pay attention because what I'm saying is we've lived long enough to see their algorithm. We saw in 1964 when they gave us everything we wanted, but they checkmated us. We saw with Reagan, they gave us everything we wanted in a sense of affirmative actions and, you know, the UC programs and all these type of programs. But what happened? The 94 crime bill. Then Bill Clinton came. What happened? Three strikes and you out. And now we right here in front of it. And this is the part that I want you to understand. Now we right in front of it, seeing in plain sight them setting the system up to recreate a third or fourth or fifth generation of massly incarcerated people of black descent. These home invasion robberies, these 7-Eleven murders, these follow home, these, these gun, this gunplay, all of this stuff is a setup. Because, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, in 2023, when they start talking about who we're going to select as the next president, you know, they're going to be talking about crime. And this is how they they hoodwink and bamboozle mama them because mama them, you know, they they voted for every law and legislation that locked up their own children. And the people who wrote these bills knew, you know, and came out the closet and said within the last recent years that these it went too far. So now let's have this conversation outside of them and find out what we need to do to fix this. And I got a plan. He got a plan. She got a plan. Black America has a plan. And all I'm saying is if you got a plan, we got to network and create our coalitions and bring them together like a Voltron. Because if you're not really trying to understand the long game, then you're being misled. And I'm going to keep it 100. I'm spilling the beans right here. Our main goal is to amend the 13th Amendment, which is to take the criminalization clause off the Constitution. We can and we will. We're going to do it through legislation. We're going to get the signatures. We're going to do all of this. And this is the gift to America from the baby boomers and Generation X, because we're going to come out with a million dollars each in a class action lawsuit suing America. And then after we do do this, then they could have discussions about reparations. How can you have a discussion about reparations when there's still a slavery clause in the Constitution? So this is why everybody is mad. So now that you have a Supreme Court, um, uh, Supreme Court justices that are willing to look at the Constitution and amend the Constitution. We thought they were going to amend the 14th Amendment when it came to abortion, but the 14th Amendment had nothing to do with abortion. So now, by default, we got to talk about the 13th Amendment, which is a criminalization clause in the slavery. And I'm going to give you a quick history. Abraham Lincoln put away $8 million of, of, of money. He called it the Freedmen's Bank Bureau. And that money was for the newly freed men um, the newly freed slaves to have to purchase land, to purchase property, to purchase equipment, borrow so they can actually be sustainable and, and, and run their own farms and make money. But Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. So the Freeman Bank Brewer money absolutely disappeared. So look at 1865 in a sum of eight million dollars in equity. Think about the equity. Over 100, 150 plus years of equity. And then if you look at the criminalization clause and the criminalization clause in the Constitution came into effect because they were talking about reconstruction after the Civil War. So they decided to put the criminalization clause, go ahead and catch any and every slave, put them in a chain gang and rebuilt the South on free labor. And we did not readdress the situation until Rosa Parks got tired and didn't want to move from the front of the bus. Boom, there it is. So now... Rosa Parks did not move to the back of the bus. So now Rosa Parks, she sat there and she created what they called a boycott. The national boycott means 
for a whole year and a half, black people walked to work in those uh, particular places who discriminated on the buses. And it became, you know, a financial tragedy to the busing system. So they decided to, you know, deregulate or desegregate the buses. And that's because Rosa Park got tired. So what about in 2024 when evil will be on the ballot and we decide to sit back and stand by and stand back and not support any of their narratives or any of their agenda and see who exactly they come up with, who they want to run America. And then we can sit back and have a plan for black America. We cannot listen. Assimilation was an epic fail. I'm sure there's a lot of people, and I know my 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 uh, classmates and coworkers and my best of friends right now are sitting in their uh, uh, le legal their, their their leisure desks and their own offices, thinking that they were going to make a difference in the community. But all they did was change their tax bracket because the higher you go up from the totem pole, is the less you could do anything for your people because they hire us to basically do the will of them. So if you're working in a social work, you're not going to do nothing for black people. You better, you're going to do something for Mexicans. You're going to do something for all the immigrants that's coming in right now because they don't have a plan for us because the expectation for us to be here in the next 40 years is does not exist. Do you remember growing up and we used to bag on black people? When I say black people, dark people. Everybody had black families, like my family. If you look at the Glovers, you look at Woodrow Wilson Glover, you know, my father, my grandfather, even my grandmother. Look at them. They was a different type of black. You know, my mom and them got a little light skin in them, you know, a little, you know, some some green eye, blue eye, you know, a little something, something, something. But do you remember there would be family with like black, we was like a lot of dark people. Now and everybody's brown. The reason I'm a little darker today is because of um, summer camp. But what I'm saying is, just think about 40, 50 years from now, everybody's going to be looking like my daughter, you know, and she's really not biracial. She, she's 100 percent black. That's a sister because her daddy's black and there's no way that she can act anything outside of that. But my point and what I'm saying is they have, you know, in their think tanks that we will not even be here or be relevant, that the genocidal movement is in full effect. So. I'm sitting back and I want to spark at least one mind a day. I want to spark at least somebody to have the heart and the courage just to look back and say, wow, did we have a plan? Did we vote for this? Are we going to sit back? Or if we don't do nothing, what's the consequences down the road? The consequences down the road are so harsh that we can't even entertain a thought in terms of supporting evil. And when I say evil, the lesser the two evils, basically, if you put names on evil, you got evil and evil. One of them is Satan and one of them is Lucifer. One of them is positive and principalities. One of them is the devil of the earth. Because right now, if you look at what's going on in America today, evil was on the ballot and we supported it. And we can't sit back and, you know, understand that that uh, you can demonize a human being because if you look at Donald Trump himself, they demonized him. But look at the party that did it. The party that did it, first four letters is demo. Now, if I said I was a multi-platinum artist lying through my teeth and you said, let me get it, let me get, what's your streaming? Let me, let me hear your album. And I say, um, here's my demo. That's fake. That's fraudulent. And the word crack means to rule by. So the Democratic Party means rule by the devil. So we have finally stepped up and understand that it's powers and principalities and evil doers in high places that we got issues with. Because I'm not going to sit here and wrestle amongst flesh and blood because we got some people what they call advocates of the devil. You know, they'll just, you know, uh, comment or say something stupid, not really understanding that they're the ones that's stupid and they're the ones that's getting played. OK, now. When I say black America, black is an acronym for black, Latin, Asian, Caucasian kinsmen, meaning we just going to create some moral leaders in this country who are going to fix the fabric of this country by creating opportunities. Because Mama's Nim Democratic Party, abortion was few and in between. Today's Democratic Party, abortion is on demand. Mom and them Democratic Party had social programs, CETA programs, programs that was taking high school kids and training them so they can have career jobs outside of college. That worked to a T. But when it came to our opportunity, hey, they, we couldn't even have wood shop or metal in high school. They took that out because they wanted us to fuel 
the prison industrial complex because crime does pay and crime pays a whole lot. Just imagine if there's a homicide in your community. I'm talking about communities in the hood, you know, south of the 10, north of the 105, uh, west of the one, west of the 405. East of the 405 and west of the 110. I'm talking about in that pocket. Could you imagine if there's a homicide? Everybody's eating. Just imagine if you was on patrol, a traffic cop doing traffic duty, writing tickets all day, and you hear a homicide and you was the first one on scene to set the perimeter. Man, you got four to eight more hours, man. You about to just eat by just standing there. Could you imagine the detective that just got off about to go home and eat dinner with his wife, get a call. There's a homicide. He got to go make some double and triple time. And then they don't call the Connor's office until almost sunup. So all night that they're going to have everybody's going to be eating. And then when they take them to jail, they got a public pretender who's eating. They got a prosecutors who's eating. You see what I'm saying? It's it's a cash cow. It is a economic situation where we really got to have conversations to somehow create a deal with the uh, prison uh, investors and somehow find a way to flip the script. Because if we don't, those are going to be our competitors. But what I'm saying is Joe Biden said, if you don't vote for him, you ain't black. And all I got to say is, nigga, blank you, your mom and everybody else, punk. And that's on everything, because at the end of the day, America has to do better. And at the end of the day, we as a people have to do better to protect our God because we're advocating the devil's mission, but we're not standing up for righteousness. You see, right now, today is the 18th. OK, number one is knowledge is the gift God gives us. Number eight on the chart in terms of supreme mathematics is build or destroy. Why are we talking about abortion? Because you make a decision to abort and then you got to start over. But we're making a decision to build. So when it get to that ninth month, we have to build and keep building and keep building because the number one thing to a building is the foundation. That foundation has been laid. That foundation cement and solid is so solidified that no matter what, it's going to happen. So we just got to frame it on how we want what we want and make some friends and have allies instead of enemies. So this is why we have to have our own narrative. We can't support any agenda other than the black agenda, which is civil rights 2.0. Or, OK, or civil rights 2K because Dr. Kingdom had a plan and these assassins bullets. If you just look at the assassin bullets, it's like the plan goes with it. Just like neighborhood Nip. Nip had a plan. The young homie, he had a plan. But why? When he died, the whole plan went away. I was so impressed with Vector 90. I was so impressed with what was coming into the community. But like I said, they depend on these assassin bullets for us to just sit back. But us athletes. We've been in practice before and a starting quarterback. Oh, pull, pull, hamstring or ankle or tear his knee up. Next man up. That's what we doing. That's what we doing, because I cannot just sit back and let God's people go down in vain because I know better. You know, I, and I, like I said, and I'm not nothing special. I'm just a man who, you know, who's born again, who lived a life and allowed other people that I thought, you know, was real that I thought was for the cause, that I thought was going to hold it down. I watched them just be so selfish and just do everything for themselves. OK, because the second time around, I mean, man, reflection is better than faith. So reflect on your life and us living in these times right now. This is a perfect climate, man, to do something special. Can you just imagine going down in history? You know, something in the 21st century that has never been done before. The complete liberation and close the racial gap through racial equity when it comes to the former slaves in this country. See, they got a proposition called Proposition 27 and the Indians is asking for our help. And I just want to ask them Indians, look, what have you done for the black community other than be slaves uh, uh, owners yourselves? You know, we how can we support Indian tribal when we sub trying to survive? So I'm saying is, can we be a, a tribe? You know, can we be sovereign? Because I would love to see an all black casino. You see what I'm saying? So we are their good economic. And as long as we sit back and allow them to make our decisions for us, then we're just going to just sit back and wither away because that assassin's bullet kills dreams. But it has to be a next man up. And I'm bringing up that assassin's bullet because you don't really understand what's going on. It ain't flesh and blood. It's powers and principalities, evildoers in high places. And these evildoers in high places is, you know, Putin in them, you know, Biden in them. 
Biden had a homeboy. And I'm going to say this, I'm going to get up out of here. I got work to do. Biden got a home, had a homeboy from Japan, okay? And this homeboy from Japan was supposed to, you know, um, campaign for a Democratic candidate so they can practice democracy in Tokyo or in the country of Japan. But somehow, before they can even um, leave the first city, they were going to take a train tour, just like Joe Biden in America. He goes down the eastern seaboard and he campaigns. That's his thing. He does rail. It's old school, but it's, it's going through cities. It's a beautiful thing. So they had the same thing set up in Japan. But uh, according to my knowledge, Japan, Japan is it, it practiced democracy, just like America practiced democracy. But America is not a democratic country. America is a republic to the republic for which it stands one nation under God. It's a God fearing republic. Japan is a empire, an emperor. They've, they've been under the umbrella of the emperor for 600 B.C. It's not blood's cuz. I mean, before Christ. So why would they switch that up? And you see how Western rules and Western civilization was starting to get up in there and Biden homeboys about the press and somehow. He got blasted on in a country that only had 10 shootings in the last 100 years. So you're talking about he got blasted in a, in, a, in a space that this does not happen. And the person who did it was clearly a professional. It was a hit because somehow he smuggled in two separate barrels. Just, OK, one, two. OK, bam. He has some duct tape or electrical tape or some Gorilla Glue tape. And then he had two pieces of wood with the two bullets. And that was the device that he put together, got close enough to kill Biden's homeboy. And within hours, can you believe the sitting president of the United States of America, the most powerful country? And if you run in this country, you, you can be considered the most powerful man. But we know he has hammers because, you know, he's you know, within hours. Biden went from Green New Deal being a progressive president talking about, you know, getting a deal with semiconductors because that's what this was all about. The chips for the semiconductors. His homeboy got blasted. And within hours, Biden was in Saudi Arabia. Talking to somebody that he said was going to make a pariah because he killed an American ambassador that's married to an American citizen right now. So Biden went and cut a deal with him because he lost his connect in Japan. But see, the connect in Japan, that energy was more so in those semiconductors and technology. This situation, he going back to gas. Like, wait a minute. And then he asked these guys to pump more gas as if they're going to do him a favor. So, but aren't these the same people that was with Al Qaeda and Saddam Hussein and... Uh, I don't I mean, like I said, in plain sight. So when they say evil will not prevail, evil is in the White House. So evil is running the world right now. And as a black man, I'm not going to be guilty by association. You can go to hell by yourself, but you're not taking me or mine. And I'm at least do my due diligence and try to convince at least a few people to sit back because we all can't be in the same spot at the same time, because clearly they don't want this to happen. But for some strange reason, there was a, a, a people out there that's just rising up and all they just doing is what, you know, what comes natural. Me talking to you today is the easiest thing that I can do. So why not turn a profit? It reminds me of back when I was you know, younger, I needed to challenge and change my position. I ain't changing my position no more. I'm going to sit back and I'm going to play my position and we're going to do this. And this uh, build a better black America, a better black America, ain't no build. A Better Black America is ABBA, A-B-B-A, Term of Endearment, Acronym. A Better Black America. Build Back Better was something that they stole from A Better Black America. So Joe Biden's administration stole my, my brand and made A Better Black, uh, a Build Back Better. But to Build Back Better, that means you got to destroy it. Because if I bought a house and I didn't like it and I wanted to Build Back Better, it's a complete teardown. And what if I don't get the funding to build it back? So what if Biden don't become the president as an incumbent? So he just destroyed the universe. He just destroyed the universe. So moving forward, the world 
is watching and the world is understanding. And like I said, God is our sponsors, but we do have conservatives of America that COA.org, which is black conservatives. And we just ask for your nickels and pennies in conjunction with uh, black men march on L.A. We conjunction with cease for peace. And that cease for peace is about to be about to blow because we don't want our brothers to be killing our brothers anymore. We 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 want to go against homicide. We want to get the fair one back. OK, if you you know, you got a settlement that you need to settle, man, don't go just shooting up the block, killing in innocent people. We don't condone none of that. We don't condone game banging, but we do condone being fraternal, meaning we could change these games to something special because the blueprint has already been laid. We just got to sit back and understand that we have to do something and have a significant event to basically make them think. But if we stand by, stand back and stand down in the 2024 election in 2028, they got to come correct because of this madness right now. We don't support that because and I sit back and I hear him say evil will not prevail. Evil is in the White House and evil is doing his thing. So this second time around, we cannot make the same mistake. It's impossible. So listen, I'm motivated, I'm encouraged, ready to roll, okay? We haven't even uh, gotten to August yet. So it's time to start building. It's time to have our narrative. And then the first week going into September to push the plan because that's when that political season opened up. They're gonna have Super Tuesday and all that. And like I said, I'm not telling you to not vote in the midterms because that is the most important aspect when it comes to the community. We're talking about a national boycott of the 2024 election to give the big middle finger and I it's the big middle finger to this Democratic Party because this is not mama and them Democratic Party like I said this Democratic Party you know abortion is on demand mama and them party was in between this Democratic Party you know it was some affirmative actions and some assimilation and some motivation called civil rights but this one right here is a replacement act OK, they were literally trying to replace us. And this abortion thing, I'm going to give you some advice. I'm going to get up out of here. If you got sons and daughters and, you, you know, you're dealing with, you know, the abortion, and all that, just tell them to put a rubber on. Just like I tell my daughter, if you get pregnant, that's your responsibility. And, you know, we're going to love you, but don't get pregnant because you ain't getting no abortion. Like I said, and then you know how to fight. So if somebody try to do something to you or whatever, baby, you know what you got to do. But what I'm saying is, man, I'm just pleading with you. Let's let's really start thinking and having these conversations and start having these conversations amongst your people in private, because when it's time to have this conversation and, and, and to roll this revolution that will be televised, because I'm sure Gil Scott Heron, you know, the revolution will not be televised. I'm sure he didn't see the Internet and social media, but this one is going to be televised. OK, because we can and we will. And all we got to do is just look at our history and basically finish the job. They had a plan. They had a plan. And it's on us. And like I said, with this class action lawsuit, it's going to put a million dollars in the bank accounts of baby boomers and Generation X. And that's not reparations. That's not reparations. You know, that's a class action lawsuit. Listen, Joe Biden was the first president to basically, after his homeboy got popped in China, to fly into Israel and to that airport and to that climate. He was the first one to fly in there. But the real, when we talk about the streets, you know, literally he lost his connect, so he had to check in. And when I say check in, he was the first president to fly into that country and to fly out. But he actually he, he, he took a bag with him. So when he landed, he dumped a hundred million dollars. So wouldn't you let him go through if he took care of your whole economy? I could just imagine, you know, the Arabs over there waiting a bus on Joe Biden. But they sit back and said, he just gave us a hundred million dollars. Let him go for now. Let him fly away. He just paid for our economy for the whole year. A hundred million dollars is two million dollars per black American person. It's only between 40 and 45 million blacks in this country. So you're talking about that would have been a two banger, two meal tickets for every black person. That hundred million, whose wealth is that? So we're going to have to spread the wealth. 
the cap, the archdiocese put out $83 million. That's almost $2 million each. So we know it can happen, but we're going to have to do something. And I'm telling you what we're going to do. We're going to stand by and stand back like Trump told the Proud Boys. We're not associated with any political party. We are declaring our independence and we are claiming our racial and social equity. But that being said, man, I could go on and on and on. So listen, go to a Better Black America TV on um, YouTube. I'm working on videos today, so we're going to start uploading and being real aggressive this week. Go to conservativesofamerica.coa. Drop me a little penny a day, a nickel a day, because if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. And at the end of the day, we all know the game, okay? EINs, tax IDs, um, corporate credit, Dun & Brad, get your personal credit together. This reminds me of where we were, you know, when um, the money was flowing. Things got bad, you know, in the late 90s early 2000s, but we had a whole lot of money. And that whole lot of money lasted to around 2006, 2007, 2008. And that same play has been played again. So if you're looking to get off the grid, like Beyonce said, you know, I just quit my job. You're looking to quit your job, get to some investments. The energy is changing. Remember, Beyonce used to be a devil worshiper. Beyonce used to be charged as, you know, doing seances and all that. But think about it right now. She's saying, you can't break my soul. And she's speaking for, and she's telling everybody, and she's speaking for the entire black race to the Democratic Party because that's the one that have a stronghold on us. You can't break our soul. Think about, think about it. And like I told you, I mentioned before that Jill Scott was out there pleading, telling black men to lead, okay? And then you got women out there telling us to follow them. Listen, men, look in that mirror, bruh. Look in that mirror, bro, because I'm, I'm calling on a few good men. It's like the Marines, okay? See, see, anybody could go to the Army, but when you talk about a Marine, you know, that's that's that one Uncle Sam come out there So I choose you. So I'm just saying to my brothers, man, it's time to make it happen, man. It's time to get motivated and encouraged and, and take this thing to another level because first time, shame on us. Second time, shame on them. So we got a plan, and anybody got a plan, get at me. OK, so we can actually just have, you know, one one, you know, one mission, you know, at hand and uh, somehow strategically put it in a, in, in a way where, you know, it's a win win for everybody. Cause like I said, we don't want no oppositions. You know, we just want to build and not be destroyed because evil was on the ballot in 2020 and we are suffering from evil being in the White House today. So go to the gas station, you know, go buy some clothes, go do whatever you need to do. Just understand there's no way we could do that again. First time, shame on us. Second time, shame on us. So we will not even support anything that got anything to do with evil. So what I'm saying is there's no such thing as lesser to two evils. It's basically if, if you give two names, Lucifer and Satan, it's a lose, lose. So but at the end of the day, the best thing to do sometimes when you really don't know is to stand still. So we are, we're at a we're at a crossroad as a people. And from the visionary perspective, the crossroad, two rights make a left and two lefts make a right. But there is a shovel or there is shovels and there's digging material to create a path straight way. And that's what we got to do. So we got to create our own path because this path is not for us. It's for them. So we're going to stand by and stand back. We're going to amend that constitution. We're going to be freed from the federal level. And we're going to find a way to basically not frame America, but form America the way that she needs to be. But we have to divorce her and we need our alimony with chips and dips. I can't say it. Born again. That being said, y'all have a good day. Peace out. I'm your man, Bouchon Glover. Peace out.